Today I'm painting a watercolor chickadee. Now I'm trying something new. Instead of taping my paper down or using a block, I'm just using a loose piece of watercolor paper and I'm wetting both sides of the watercolor paper down um, a few different times over and over again. I also wet down the surface that I put it on. I chose to use glass, but I've also done it on a hard plastic surface. Anything smooth that the wet paper will stick to naturally. This forms a suction on the paper. Now I'm going in with my watercolor. I'm using a fine brush here just to start to map out the bird a little bit. Um, I am painting wet on wet for most of this painting, so it ends up feeling very free and soft. When you paint on wet paper with wet paint, your paint bleeds a little bit depending on how wet your paper is. And right now my paper is, is pretty wet, so my paint is going to bleed quite a bit. That's why I don't want to do too many details at this point. I'm just kind of getting the general shape of the bird in there. I do want the colors on my bird to bleed out into the page. That's why I'm doing wet on wet watercolor painting. I've been experimenting with different watercolor techniques and this is one that I'm really enjoying. It is a little bit uh, more freeing. You don't have quite as much control when you're doing wet on wet, but there's something really nice about that. You really let the paint um, tell the story here. And you'll see that I'm putting my paint strategically down. I'm not putting too heavy of a color down yet because I do know that this color will expand. If I were to go in with straight uh, Payne's gray uh, uh, without diluting it first with water, I would definitely have a large dark spot on my page that I would have trouble controlling. But because I'm going in with just a little bit of paint at a time, I can control it a little better. Here you see me picking up some paint with a with a wet brush. This is something you can do if your page is wet. It's a little bit easier to pick up the paint. Uh, you can also do that with a paper towel. I just used a brush this time because I had more control. Now I'm adding in the berries. Now these berries eventually are going to um, expand and kind of become red blobs on my page rather than solid berries. But uh, again, that's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking to create a texture of the berry. I'm not looking to create a very detailed berry. And now I'm doing my border. Um, the paper is starting to dry just a little bit in places, so I am adding a little bit of water here just to make that color move. I really like adding my own border. A taped border is really nice, but there's something also nice about a painted border like this. I'm using them more and more in my artwork. I just like the feel of it. Um, and if you choose to frame something that has a taped border and your tape is just a little bit off at, at a weird angle, it really shows up. Whereas something like this, because it's an organic shape, uh, you don't notice it quite as much if it's a little off in one side. The colors I'm using here are Payne's Gray and Yellow Ochre. Those are the colors I'm also using in the bird. I like to keep my palette minimal if I can. So with this painting, we're only using Payne's Gray, Yellow Ochre, a splash of orange, uh, red, and a little tiny bit of blue. Um, but that's it. We're not adding any more colors in here. I really like it when paintings uh, use minimal color palettes. And because the chickadee is, is a black and white bird, generally it, it's nice to have the red berries in there to just give this a pop of color. The yellow ochre helps as well. It warms up the bird and it warms up the background, um, but the berries really do make this painting stand out. The longer I wait here, the more time the page has to dry, so I can start to get in and do a little bit finer detail on the bird. I'm doing that in, in pieces because I do want, um, I want to use the paper to its advantage when it's wet, and then I will dry it and add in some finer lines. You can see here I'm adding a little bit of fine lines into the wing, but they will, they will not be crisp. They will bleed out just a little bit into the page. Uh, which is kind of how a bird looks. The bird has feathers and feathers have little tiny lines inside them and they're not a hard edge and um, that's why I like to do this. I'm choosing to use a bird to do my wet on wet watercolor experiment here. This is only my second painting um, going straight without tape, uh, wetting down both sides of the page and creating that suction and I really like how it's working. So you can see here that um, my lines are going on more crisp. I would say that my page is about 90% dry now. 
Um, so it's not going to bleed nearly as much as it did in the beginning. So I can definitely start to add a little bit of detail here. I don't want to wet down my bird again. Uh, it, it potentially could make the bird a little bit muddy if I were to go over it again. So we're going to be working on the bird at more or less 90% uh, wet to dry state moving forward. But this is a good chance to put in these little fine lines, to add the beak, to add the eye, all of that stuff should be done when the page is just a little bit more dry. I am adding just a little bit of water to some of these lines to make them bleed a little bit because the page is mostly dry. Um, but I'm not wetting down the entire bird, just the section around the paint that I just applied to help it pull onto the page. Now I'm adding in that orange. It's just going to give it a warm pop. Uh, I don't want to add too much in, but I think it is nice in there. If you look at a chickadee, they often do have a little bit of a brownish orange uh, belly um, that, that transitions into white when it gets closer to the head. We have a lot of chickadees outside our window right now, so I get to watch them pretty regularly, and I've grown quite fond of the birds that go to our bird feeder, and it's made me made me want to paint birds. So that's another reason why we're doing a bird today. Now I'm adding in the uh, stem to the berries. Um, as you can see on the bottom, it still actually is a little bit too wet to be doing this level of detail. So I'm going to come back to this stem and maybe touch it up a little bit. Um, the center of my page is mostly dry, but the edges are still retaining a little bit of water. So I have to be careful uh, when I put my paint down. Now I'm going back into those berries and I'm creating a shadow. Uh, the berries are still a little bit wet, so that shadow is going to blend, uh, but it should, it should stay on that left-hand side. The light in this is coming from the top right. And you can tell that mostly by the berries and also by just the little bit of um, yellow ochre and orange shadow that we're putting on the bird's belly. There isn't a very strong light here. I'm imagining it's a cloudy day. But you can definitely see a highlight and a shadow on the berries now, which is great. I'm dropping in some berries back in the uh, behind the bird. Uh, the bird's actually going to be sitting on a branch, and he's just surrounded by these, these poppy red berries. The branch is going to go directly over top of the bird, um, but I'm going to, because the bird's sitting on the branch, the part that would be crossing his body would be quite dark because it would be in shadow. So I think that we will still have a nice transition when I go directly over top of the, the watercolor that we've already put down. Now I'm doing a little bit more detail work on the bird. Again, our page is getting more and more dry. Um, so I can go in and, and get some of these, these fine lines done. And now we can finally put in the beak. I wanted to wait until the page was pretty much 100% dry to do the beak. I didn't want any bleed on the beak. Um, I am going to have to add just a little bit of water to the center of the beak to blend that uh, Payne's Gray out into the beak so it doesn't feel so sharp. Um, but the, the beak shouldn't be blending outward. The beak, unlike feathers, is a solid object. It does have a hard edge. And uh, when we do the feathers using wet on wet, but then we do the beak and the feet um, and the, the tree branch in front of the bird, on more dry paper, we can get those different textures across. I'm just adding some more dark to the face now. We didn't want to add this level of intensity when the page was very wet, because as I mentioned before, it would have really pooled and expanded and we would have just had a, a large black dot in the middle of our page. Um, so now I'm choosing to get darker with my paints gray because the page is dry. And now I'm adding in that eye with leaving just a little bit of a highlight where the sun is hitting it. I love painting birds. Maybe it's because they don't have hands or feet. Hands and feet are very challenging, even on animals. Um, but there's something just... A bird's shape is kind of simple and complicated all at the same time. They have so many feathers, there's so much detail going on. Um, but at the same time, they're just kind of a simple bird shape, um, which I really, I really enjoy that shape. 
now I'm adding in a shadow to my to my twig that the bird is sitting on. I'm still a little scared to pull that into the bird. Okay, I think it's gonna work. If that bird is at all wet, it's going to make that um, stick run into the body and we'll get a big blob of brown and Payne's gray in the bird where we've so carefully put our detail now. Um, but the bird was dry enough there, so we got away with it. But I definitely would make sure your bird is dry before going over top of it with the stick. And we're going to eventually add some feet, um, but again, we need to wait for that stick to dry, uh, otherwise the feet would just be little dark blobs. Just adding in some more berries now. I like adding berries at different stages. Um, that gives each berry a unique feel. Some of them are very, um, almost more just like splotches of color, and then other ones have a crisper edge and a more obvious highlight and I think that that makes for an interesting painting when things are applied at different stages of the paper's uh, wetness. Yeah, adding in those little sticks. You you don't want to do any detail like this when the page is wet. That Those small lines would just vanish and turn into um, streaks of, of unwanted color. Adding in the shadows is very important. It really helps those berries pop and separate from each other. I've created groups of berries because that's how they grow. You don't very often see a single berry on a branch. You often see groups of berries together, um, but the shadow will help to separate those bundles of berries and make them feel um, more like individual berries. Adding in, I'm kind of cheating here. I mean, it's not really cheating, but I'm adding a berry where I had a little bit of um, unwanted bleed come out of the bird's body there. Um, so these, these berries are actually um, strategically being added to cover up just a little bit of paint that got away from me there. Uh, but I do like them behind the bird. I think it helps to frame the bird. I wanted to add a couple there again because I, I wanted to show a group of berries rather than just a single berry. Uh, I want to get a little bit more bleed in into the color on the page. So I'm while the berries are wet, I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of water, and I'm trying to pull some of that berry color into the background. Um, also adding just little dots of the berry color to the background to imply perhaps there's another tree with berries not too far back or another branch of this tree. Um, and those berry colors would, would catch in that, but they would be out of focus, um, like the, just the little dots that I'm putting in here. I really like how the top left-hand side has a bit of a dark um, border, so I'm trying to replicate that on the bottom just to balance it out a little bit here. And again, I'm adding just those few red dots to imply that maybe there's more berries behind the bird. Now, uh, I, um, I use the blow dryer here. This is the first time I've actually dried my page. I usually dry a watercolor multiple times, but because this is a wet on wet painting, um, almost from beginning to end, we did not need to do that, which is kind of nice. I'm just adding a little bit more shadow here with a fine brush, um, just to give those berries even more separation. Uh, the paper must have been more wet than I realized because my berries did kind of blend together even though I did give them shadows, so I just feel like I need to go in and add yet another shadow to these berries to help them stand out from each other a little bit. To give them some roundness and to make them pop. And I also need to add in just a little spot of dark on the berries. Uh, when you look at the, these kind of berries, at the bottom they have a, like a little spot um, opposite the stem, so I want to add those in too. Here we go, now I'm putting in the feet, just a couple simple lines using Payne's Gray. Uh, don't need to be too complicated with it. This is generally, a, you know, we're not, we do have a lot of detail in a way, but at the same time, we actually don't have that much detail. Our berries are very loose, our, our twig is very loose, and the bird, with the exception of the eye, a little bit of the wing and the beak, is also very loose, and we've created that using wet on wet. Um, so I don't want to get too carried away with my detail here, otherwise I would be confusing a couple different styles. You want the bird to be the most detailed thing, uh, and the berries to be the most vibrant thing in the painting. And there you have it, there's our chickadee. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you would like to see more, please subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook at Creations by Kendra.
Happy painting.